Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, just give it one second. Let some more people join in here. Um, should be coming live here in a few seconds. Cool, and we are live. Welcome everyone. Uh, really excited to have Samuel from Fleek joining us today. Uh, he's going to be giving us some cool tips, some tricks. Um, cool. and, and we are live. Within... Welcome everyone. Oh, uh, really cool excited to have there. <laughs> uh, give us some some cool tips and tricks that you can use in your projects that that work with the IPF ecosystem. Um, so yes, yeah, Samuel, thanks a lot for joining us. No problem. I'm happy to be here and uh, happy guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, really excited. Um, and where, where, where are you calling in from? Uh, I'm from uh, Montreal, Canada. So uh, like yeah. it's spring over here. So like, it's like all sunny. Like we had a difficult winter, <laughs> very uh, gloomy. But now it's like sunny outside. So yeah, very like positive. <laughs> yeah, I sent in one of my teammates uh, a picture. It's 70 degrees in Colorado yesterday. And now today it's it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> we around with flip-flops yesterday. And, yeah. But uh, yeah, really excited to have you. Um, really excited with the IPFS. Uh, a, over half the hackers are using it in their projects in one way or another, which is very impressive. Um, and, and really impressed with with all the hacks that I've seen up to the midway checkpoint. Everyone's doing fantastic work. Remember that today is the last day um, to submit something for the midway point. So, you know, create, create your GitHub repo, whatever work you've done to this point and, and submit something so that you can submit a final project and I'm really excited to see those final ones. And um, yeah, without further ado, Samuel, I'll, I'll hand it off to you um, and uh, let you get started. Well, thank you. I'm share my screen right here. So we can also see my screen. Excellent. So, like I said, uh, like I introduced, I'm Samuel. I'm from Fleek. So, um, just a quick introduction. A Fleek, we're a company and uh, that we deal with a lot of Web3 protocols like IPFS and Ethereum. And without a doubt. Uh, I have, I'm convinced that during this, this hack, you're probably using uh, at least Ethereum in, in some sort of way. Uh, and Fleek can help you uh, just save some time with that. But our main bread and butter uh, protocol is IPFS. And we can use it for uh, various things that like I will show you that I believe will just save you a ton of time because uh, you know you are doing this uh, hackathon, you're probably solving all kinds of problems. So if we can save you some time. I think that's pretty uh, valuable. So uh, what can we help you with uh, at Fleek? So there are two things. The most important part is Fleek hosting. So the idea of Fleek hosting is that you have a, a site of some kind and you want to deploy it to the web. Well, you can do that using IPFS. And we have a flow that makes that pretty easy. And the second thing, which we'll also cover in this presentation is Fleek storage, which is uh, to use IPFS uh, as a file storage system, and it has various interesting uses. For example, uh, maybe you've heard of uh, NFTs. We, er we hear a lot about that these days. So if you have a project that's dealing with NFTs, you might want to stay tuned toward the end of this presentation. We're also going to cover this topic and show a fun little uh, demo also. So we get started about the first half of this presentation, we're going to talk about Fleek hosting. Now, Fleek hosting is like uh, the bread and butter of what we do at, at Fleek. The idea is it's kind of like Netlify, but for Web3 protocol. For example, uh, while uh, a normal um, uh, site hosting uh, service will just put it on, the, uh, on a server somewhere, we actually host it on IPFS. Now we make this like as easy as possible because uh, we want to remove like as much friction uh, as we can from dealing with uh, these web three protocols. So what we do is you pretty much connect your GitHub account, right? Your your app is on GitHub, and from there you connect your GitHub account to Fleek, and we uh, take care of the deployment. Um, there are some things to make your life even more easier. Like we automatically detect the framework that you're using. So if you're using React, and I will show you that later, 
is going to automatically detect and populate the correct settings. Also, there is a, um, a CI CD flow uh, that is included. So anytime you push uh, a new commit to GitHub, it's automatically going to create a new deployment. So that's meant like to uh, just once once you have leak set up, uh, that's it, you're done. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. And also, uh, at Fleek, uh, we also do a, we have a built-in CDN. And the idea behind this is that we are kind of like um, the bridge between Web3 and Web2. So you want to use IPFS, but you also want to be like the same quality as a traditional site. So what we also do is you have your site on IPFS, and as a bonus, you also uh, have a CDN that uh, can deliver your, your the, the content of, of your site, so it's like super fast. So we might well ask the question like, okay, so Fleek can host your site on IPFS, but why would I want that? Why not just go with uh, uh, a, a, like an AWS uh, service? Well, the first one is you want to make your app truly decentralized. So. Um, I can talk like for myself, like before I was at Fleek, I was a DAP developer and I was making like front ends for uh, smart contracts. And one problem that I was, was kind of evident is that, okay, so you, you have a smart contract that is on, um, on Ethereum. You have your front end that talks to this contract, probably using MetaMask. But is it decentralized? Well, you, I, I can make a case that it not, it's not really decentralized because even though you're talking to a smart contract that is decentralized, your site itself is in a is in a, your front end that talks to this contract is in a centralized server. So is it really decentralized? Well, not really. Uh, furthermore, uh, you, when you type your uh, the, the naming system that you use, for example, if I go to google.com, finding google.com, that is another centralized uh, service. So uh, using IPFS, at least, allows you to decentralize the part about hosting. And the part about naming is also like uh, uh, fixed, but I will show you like uh, how in a, another slide. Also, it's censorship resistant. So um, as we might know about IPFS, everything in IPFS is identified by a hash. So, uh, let's suppose that you host your site on IPFS. Us, as, as Fleek, we're going to pin the content. Pinning means that we make sure that uh, the, 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 the content associated with your hash is always available. But nothing stops you from also uh, uh, distributing this content. And as such, it is censorship resistance, meaning that if one day, the government like comes to Fleek and says, "Okay, stop, stop uh, hosting the site. We're gonna unpin the files because we have no choice but to comply." But the site is still uh, not down because anyone can can host it from there using the uh, the hash. Therefore, it never disappeared. So that's really cool. Also, and that's a new thing that uh, we added, I believe, last month. You uh, anything that you host on Fleek. Uh, what it is a site or files or whatever is also backed up on Filecoin. So that's a fun uh, little feature that we added. Filecoin, uh, if you don't know what it is, it's like the, it's a blockchain related to IPFS. I guess you can, it's a separate project, but it, it is linked to it. So it, it I guess you can um, think about it as like the economic uh, layer of IPFS. But that's really uh, a cool thing that, uh, that it does. And now decentralized naming. So like I said previously, let's suppose you have, you have a site like google.com. When you, you type google.com in the browser, what actually happens is that the browser uh, talks to a, a, root, um, a root zone uh, server that is gonna uh, allow you to resolve the, the COM part. And then the, CO, the server associated with the COM part, the, the com, is going to resolve where to find Google. And then if you and, and, and if you had typed www before, 
the, the Google server is going to tell you where to resolve the www. So that's how the internet works. But of course, it is centralized because at the origin, you need to make this call to the root zone server, and that makes naming it naming itself centralized. So what solution are there? There are two solutions, and both of them are integrated with Fleek. Uh, I will also show you during the demo uh, how you can add the keys. It's very easy. The first one is ENS. So we all love Ethereum over here, I think. Yes. So ENS is DNS, but it's on Ethereum. And uh, it stands for uh, Ethereum Name System. Now, the Ethereum Name System is a set of smart contracts. It lives on the Ethereum blockchain. And um, it, all, it all some records. And one a very common way to uh, put a site uh, on ENS is to link your IPFS hash to your ENS domain. And the idea is, if you have a browser that can resolve ENS names that generally end with .eth, uh, it's going to uh, look at the record, find the hash, and then link you to a gateway. I know that MetaMask does this. Um, you can also uh, type .eth .link at the end of your domain. It's going to resolve that way through uh, IPFS. Now, with Fleek, it's pretty easy to connect. Also, an important part is we take care of site updates. So that's interesting because uh, one problem with uh, ENS in uh, IPFS is that, OK, you can put your hash of your site on ENS. But what happens if you make an update to your site? If you make an update to your site, you now have a new hash. And you need to update it on ENS. And that's, and that's now become a bit of a hassle. So at Fleek, we just take care of the set updates. Once you connect your ENS domain on Fleek, we, uh, you, you, you give us the permissions to change the uh, content hash fitted with your site, and we update it. So once you make a, a, a change on Fleek, Fleek makes the update, creates a new hash, and with the connection, it updates the hash on ENS. So that saves you like a ton of time uh, when dealing with your with ET, with uh, ENS domains. It's very practical. And if you want an ENS domain, uh, go to app.ens.domains, and uh, from there you can buy a domain, and uh, you can use it on Fleek. And also a new integration, the last one, Handshake. That's really cool. Uh, that uh, was integrated. Uh, 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 this week, like this Monday, we did an announcement about Enshake that got a lot of positive reaction from the Enshake community about our uh, integration of Enshake. So just really quick, what is Enshake? Um, you know, uh, previously I said that when you type google.com uh, to resolve the .com, it goes to a root zone server. Well, Enshake is the root zone server, that centralized part. But instead of being just a server, it is a blockchain that is uh, secured by a, a consensus algorithm somewhat similar to Bitcoin. And uh, that's really a, a, cool, a cool project um, that by decentralizing that root zone, you now have a much more decentralized um, web. Uh, uh, also about Enshake, uh, if you have more than 15 follow, uh, followers on GitHub, I believe you can get some free free tokens. That's pretty cool. That allows you to just get a site going very easily because you need the end check tokens to buy a site. And if you uh, want to get yourself a end check domain, the best place to do it is through namebase.io. You can go there, uh, buy a site on their marketplace for a few uh, end check tokens or participate to the auction process and get yourself a name. And from there, it's very easy to connect it to Fleek. Also, new tools. Um, so like these guys on the right, I don't know what they're doing exactly, but uh, they're not using good tools, I think. But uh, recently at Fleek, we, we created some new tools on top of the one we had previously to just make your life a bit easier. Um, the first one is the Fleek CLI. So, Normally, you would use uh, 
the fleet user interface to uh, deploy a site, and I will show you afterwards. But you can also do it through the command line, and it's really easy. It's like two commands, so it's pretty simple. The second one, second tool is the Fleek API. So it's an API that allows you to interact with the Fleek servers. So literally, like on Fleek, on our UI, we're using a GraphQL API. And the cool thing is that with the Fleek, we, we actually giving you access to this GraphQL API. So like you guys are at the same level as us, you can create all kinds of cool applications similar to the, um, the Fleek user interface. And you can be creative. I got some ideas myself. I can share it afterwards, maybe. But uh, it's a, a cool little tool. And the last one, we also created some GitHub actions. I can show you like where to find it afterwards. But uh, like if you don't want to use the, the Fleek uh, CI CD flow, you can create your own using GitHub actions. So that's really practical also. So uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so here, some resources. Um, I don't know if I can uh, copy paste things in the chat, but maybe I can later on. I have a big list of uh, resources. I can do that later on. But here are some cool resources on Fleek hosting, like the docs, blog posts. We have YouTube videos. Uh, like if you like my voice and my face, you can see it on YouTube on the Fleek channel. So cool things to, to look for. But now let's just do a quick demo. Um, to conclude the first half of this presentation. Um, we will look, what we will do during this demo is deploy a site on Fleek. I will also show you um, around the docs, uh, show you the Fleek CLI, and that's why I, I created a small test application for the Fleek API. And after that, we're gonna go to the second part of the presentation, which I'm gonna show you about, talk to you about Fleek storage, also discuss NFTs. So I'm gonna close this. And uh, I'm gonna go on, actually, I can do that, app.fleek.co. App so that's our application. Now it's gonna load. And um, what we're gonna do is simply just deploy, deploy a React application, a run of like the default React application, and then um, we will see how easy it is. So test my site, my list of sites. I have a ton of sites because I use it all the time, but I click on add new site. That is our flow to create new sites. So the first step is to connect with GitHub. Click on that. And now it gives me a list of, uh, of repositories. Of course, I'm already connected. Click on my account. And if I type uh, React, I have a React repository. Yeah, this one. Now I can select the hosting service. So by default, we use IPFS, but uh, if you're feeling adventurous, there's also the internet computer from uh, Definity. That's a, a very cool subject, not the, the focus of this presentation, but it's like another blockchain uh, that is meant to be an internet service. So it, it's just fun, fun thing to, to study uh, if you're interested in the web tree, but IPFS is uh, where we're at. So we'll click continue. <clears throat> and uh, here, now this step, it should uh, automatically detect React, but uh, I guess it, did, it didn't, it must be a small bug. But here, uh, that's the, the build settings. So uh, this is my repo. I can select a branch, so the master branch in this case. And here I can select the framework. So we are supporting quite a lot of frameworks. And this support, all it means is that we automatically uh, populate the settings. Like if I click on Yugo, it uh, it's, uh, populates the setting for Yugo. If I click on uh, Jekyll, there's the one for Jekyll. But I'm a React app, so I click that. And then in the settings, there is the Docker image. And that is because how we're doing this is that uh, you select a Docker image within which your site will be built. Um, and so, and so it's important that when you create a, uh, you use a Docker image, that it's the same node version as your computer, or else there might be some problems. You need the same dependencies. That's why you're using Docker image, images. Uh, for the most most projects, I think the, the default images will work. But if they do not work, you can go on uh, dockerhub.com and 
shop for different Docker images or build your own. But we'll use this one, it's uh, good enough. And then there's the build command. So if you know React, if you, you run the um, yarn and yarn build, that will uh, build your, uh, your project, yarn just to download the dependency and yarn build to uh, build the application. And if you also know React, the default React application, all your files are going to go into a build folder. That is the folder uh, which contains the final index.html file and the CSS file and the JavaScript file and etc. So uh, just with the default, I'm going to click on deploy site. And I am welcome to this screen. So it says the site deploy in progress. And after like a few minutes, it should be all done. Right now, it's uh, downloading the, it's triggering the build, downloading the Docker image, building your site inside the Docker image. And after that, it's going to be uh, deployed. Um, but maybe an an, as an example, I can show you a site that is already built, so you don't have to wait. So let me go back. Uh, there's this demo here that I will show you later on the Flick storage uh, part. But uh, if you go on uh, the settings, domain management, here there is a, a domain that is uh, given to you by, by Fleek. And you can change the site name. So in this case, I, I change it to Crypto Museum Demo that on Fleek.co. And that's a, uh, um, uh, how you can access the, the site through Web2. Or if you own your own domain, you can do add custom domain. Uh, and use your own domain name. And it's all on Cloudflare, Cloudflare it's pretty fast. Also, um, here, that's why you get your ENS and HNS um, uh, sites, like I said previously. Um, maybe I can show you like the, the HNS, it's like very easy. Like, like I type, for example, um, crypto museum. Uh, dot n i e n that's a domain that I bought. Do verify. It asks me if I'm the owner. I add it. Then I go back here, check the configuration. Use name base is gonna automatically change the settings on name base for it to work. All right here it says that it's changing my records to confirm. And now it's going to re redirect back to Fleek and uh, return to Fleek. Now the settings, the DNS settings are correct. Now it's just going to load the site. And if I go here, verify, it should uh, work now. And indeed, now it, it's connected. Now it's co just like that. It's connected to the to Handshake. Um, and uh, if you have the correct set, the, the settings, you can access your, your NCHEC site. Like if I click this, it's gonna work here. And I am now on a, on a, on a NCHEC connected site with a top level domain that is on NCHEC. That's really cool. And, and, and just like that, now we, we actually deploy the site and we even add a, a decentralized naming system associated to it. So that is actually very cool. And just for information, by the way, why I was able to resolve .niam is because I have uh, the name servers set correctly. But if you do some research on Handshake, it's pretty easy to configure. So that's how you, you deploy a site. It was really easy. You just put your settings, select your repo, and you're, you're kind of done. But now I want to show you like the new tools that we built, like the Flick CLI. So if I go on docs.flick.co, uh, you will see there's a, a new section that for a CLI and the Flick API. And uh, on the overview, it tells you how to install the CLI um, over here with npm install dash g at flickhq.cli. And it's literally like three commands that like you do Fleek login, which is going to log you to Fleek. And then to deploy, you do this Fleek site in it. And your site is now connected to your account. And once you want to, want to make a new deployment, you do Fleek site deploy. So it's like very easy 
to just deploy your site from your, your, your local computer. But what I want to show you is the Flick API, which is this. So here it is a schema, uh, a GraphQL schema. So like I said previously, the Flick user interface is actually talking to a backend through a GraphQL API. And we make this API available to you to make your own applications. And that is uh, the, the, the GraphQL schema that we're using. I think it's missing a few mutations in, in this schema because there's a bit more than that. But just with that, it's pretty, pretty powerful. And I want to show you an example of how to um, actually use this. So I got uh, here, let me just uh, show my console. Clear, make it bigger, like this. Uh, so here, repo slash, I called it Flick API example. I'm going to open it with the code, uh, uh, Visual Studio Code. Can I rotate a little bit? I think my computer is a bit slow. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. I think my computer is just working a lot because of the uh, presentation. But uh, here's Visual Studio Code. This is just a, a basic node uh, application that I created. And just a, a quick note uh, on the Flick API. So then we get the question like, hey, can I run my, e my, my API on the front end? And so the answer for that is no, because um, you need a API key to call, to talk to the API. And if you, you use your API on the front end directly, it is going to leak the keys. So what you want to do is have a, your front end talk to a back end. And the back end is going to uh, actually make the, the call to the Flick API. And the back end is also going to secure your API key. So here's this example the most basic node application ever, an express application. So what it does is um, you go to a slash site uh, and slash the slug. I will show you where to get the slug. Yes. And from there, it makes a call to api.fleet.co slash GraphQL. You pass in the API key, and then you uh, give it a GraphQL query. So. Uh, if you don't know how GraphQL works, it's very simple. It's uh, like here, there's this query over here. It returns a type site. That's the type site. And in the query, you just type in the, the field that you want to retrieve. So let's just see like uh, this uh, in action. I'm going to do yarn, uh, actually, I'm going to do node index. Now it's started the app on port 5000. I'm going to call this uh, API. Clear. Uh, it is bigger. So I'm going to do a curl command to HTTP slash localhost port 5000 slide. And now here I need the slug. The slug, uh, you can get it on, uh, on Fleek. I'll show you where. Like here, I click on this, on the URL here, you can see it says a slash site slash bitter shadow 2718. That's the slug. So let me just copy that. And I'm going to make a graphical query to get the content of this site. So I'm going to copy the slug, press Enter. And now it's going to make a, a query. And indeed, it returns the data. And look at the fields, the ID, the team ID, the name, and the slug and those correspond to what I've queried in the GraphQL call. So that's just to show you like how it works with the, the Flick API. It's pretty cool. There's all kind of fun things that you could build with that. Like I was thinking recently, wouldn't it be cool to make like a Slack integration of that where you can see a list of your site and with the click of a button, it could call uh, this here, trigger deploy. 
So the idea is that if you don't want to uh, automatically create a, create a deployment to want to have a new commit, you could just like trigger the deploy manually to create a button. But that sounds like a, uh, in a, anyway, a fun idea to do this. And so, and, and that's it. So that's how you use Flick hosting. So like I said, I really believe that with Flick hosting, it's gonna save you a ton of time and it's gonna make your app more decentralized. So I really encourage you, like if you got an application that is like in a MetaMask integration of some kind, it's done good like to AWS or Google or, or centralized services, go on Fleek and go sit on IPFS. And just like that, you are way more decentralized web tree than you would have been otherwise. And it's pretty easy, so you save time. And now you can go to the second part of the presentation. Um, it's gonna be a bit shorter, but it's about Fleek storage. So let me go back to the presentation and let me close this and this. Uh, I'm gonna open the presentation. Sorry, over here, I'm gonna close this because my computer looks a bit slow right now. Present. All right, so we did the demo and it did not burn <laughs> like in the image. So next we go to Flick storage. So what is Flick storage? So Flick storage is to store files on IPFS. Um, these files can be images, videos, and stuff like that. Um, we made it pretty easy. So you have a user interface that you can use. You can drag and drop your files. It's not difficult to use. And there's also a Fleek storage um, uh, JavaScript package to talk with the API. And uh, it's performant. It's the same thing as the Fleek hosting. You got a C, like it's an IPFS, but there's also a CDN and this has image compression and resizing. I'm not sure what that means, but it's supposed to make it better. So cool. <laughs> so just think about some use cases of why you would want to store files on uh, uh, Flick storage. The first use case, it's um, to store your web assets for your site on IPFS. So probably like if you have a site and then you host it on Flick, all is great, but this site is going to contain images, is going to contain videos, stuff like that. And you would really, really like it, like to uh, have, to have these files on your site. The problem is if you do this, if you have your images inside your GitHub repository, it's that your build process is gonna take longer. I'll give you an example. Uh, before we created Flick Storage, we had the Flick blog deployed on um, on Flick, and we put all the images inside the repository. That was great at the beginning, but as we created more blog posts and added more images, and by the way, it was a, a Gatsby site. The build process took forever, uh, just to like. You know, my computer is pretty slow. I show you like it takes forever to open Visual, Visual Studio Code. But when I would want to create, uh, to, to run run the blog locally through the repository, it would take, I, I would have to literally start it. And then I would wait five minutes before it completed. So literally I would just start it and leave the computer <laughs> before coming back and then um, having the, the, the local server done. So, you really want to minimize the time it takes to build your your project and to build it more, most importantly locally because it's gonna take forever for you as a developer. So what we recommend is instead of putting all your, your images inside the repository, put them inside IPFS, use the CDN that we provide you and use that to link to your image. So if you have an image, you open your image tag uh, as the source, you, you just put the URL that we provide. That will save you so much time on the build, so much time when running locally, that is gonna be worth it. So that's the first use case, to store and distribute your web assets on IPFS. And it's an alternative to like AWS, S3 and all that stuff. The second use case, and now we talk about NFTs. 
you might want to store uh, the files of your NFTs. Um, in effect, NFTs in, in particular, like when there's artwork involved in your NFT, that's a file, like, like a JPEG. Like people make fun of NFTs, they say they're just JPEGs, but it's not true because there's also the blockchain part. But there is a, like a JPEG that's fitted to it. There is an image, a file, and the best place to store this file is on IPFS. All right, so I'm going to talk a bit about Fleek Storage JS. So um, if you don't want to use the user interface, there is Fleek Storage JS. It's a fun little um, JavaScript package that is very simple to use, that you can use to upload the files, view them, delete them. And all the methods are pretty simple. They like get, upload, uh, delete. It's very simple. So uh, I encourage you to look at this. Um, I also have a video tutorial in the YouTube channel, so I encourage you to look at that. But I want to talk more about NFTs, because NFTs, uh, it is, it's impossible not to talk about that, because like anytime I go on Twitter, there is a new NFT that sold for like mil millions of dollars. So I, I have to talk about NFTs. <laughs> so like I said previously, your NFTs, they contain JPEGs, right? There's a piece of artwork connected to it. So the file is very important. It's what gives value to your NFT. And uh, what is the bad way of uh, storing this file? Well, the bad way of, of storing this file is inside a URL. For example, this, like https slash uh, imgur.com slash whatever. Like, like saving your NFT on Imgur is a terrible idea. Also, saving your NFT on AWS is also a terrible idea. And let me explain to you why. Your NFT, uh, your, your URL that you get from Imgur or AWS or Google Cloud, there's no guarantee that your file is unchanged. And for example, uh, imgur.com slash cat, well, there's no guarantee that the image I'm going to get is actually a cat because someone could have changed the, the server to give me a dog or it was a, 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 a blue cat. But now I, I call to it and someone made an update and it's a green cat. Well, that's bad because like I said, it can worth million, million of dollars. Not even a single pixel needs to be modified. So. If, if right now you have a hack and you are using like a normal URL like this and it's not an IPFS, you are doing something wrong. Instead, the state of the art, and if you look at the NFT project, they all use IPFS, all of them, is to use IPFS ashes to associate the crypto art with, uh, with a file. So how it works is that you would actually save the IPFS ash on the Ethereum blockchain as part of your, your NFT. And I'm gonna show you an example later. And that's important because even if I change one pixel of, uh, of the NFT, NFT art, the IPFS hash is going to be different. That is a property of IPFS that the hash is generated from the content itself because it is, it is a hash. So that's very important. When you actually give someone an NFT that is worth millions of dollars, not even a single pixel needs to be changeable. It needs to be perfectly preserved. And that's where IPFS is important. So use IPFS. <laughs> also here I have an example, foundation.app. It's an app that allows you to buy and sell NFTs. And if you actually inspect the images, you will notice that they are in IPFS. And, and all the uh, any F NFT app that is serious use IPFS. All right, now I'm going to show you a, a quick demo of the app that uses Fleek Storage JS to uh, to store the NFTs. It's more like to give you fun ideas than anything else. So I'm going to go on my uh, Google Chrome over here. All right, and uh, I'm going to click. I'm gonna go on crypto museum dash demo dot on fleek 
that code tested the app that wasn't flicked like previously. Press enter. It's gonna open MetaMask. This application uses Rapscan, by the way, if you want to use it. I'm gonna log in. Am I on Rapscan? Yes, I'm on Rapscan. All right, so this is an app that uh, I created re really quickly in one day, just to showcase uh, how Flick Storage uh, JS works. And um, here, this app, what it does, it's very simple. You upload an image, and it creates a non a, a, It creates an NFT automatically. Uh, so here, I'm gonna click on choose image. I got uh, Vladimir Putin memes, so I'm gonna use that, I guess. Putin on a dinosaur, <laughs> and I create. And I click on create NFT. Now, on the background, what it did, it called the Flick API. It uploaded the image to IPFS and it generated an IPFS hash. Then this app used this hash to talk to the, a smart contract that will talk to you afterwards to create a new NFT with the uh, CID, the IPFS hash, associated to it. So I got this um, transaction. I'm going to do confirm. And that is going to mint this NFT. And all my NFTs are stored over here. Uh, I got some weird memes of uh, Putin uh, riding a bear. So uh, it's all, all over there. It's, it's the one I set it to my account. And if I go to the, um, the smart contract here, what I want to show you is how you can get the CID. So each token have an ID. So that is ID 43. Let's look at that. 43, and I see that this token ID indeed has a hash associated to it from IPFS, and I can get it uh, here, ipfs.fleek.co uh, slash IPFS, and I can paste the uh, CID. Uh, I think I got the wrong uh, here, S. Uh, is that the right address? IPFS. And there you go. Through a, a IPFS gateway, I can now see my, my image. And that's how it works. So it's very practical. Uh, like if you're a project that creates an NFT, I encourage you to use the Flick Storage JS. If, however, you are you don't want to, to deal with that, you can just go over here on add.flick.co. And uh, use the user interface. Okay, close this. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, and the image was uploaded, but anyways, it's fine. So I got some site. I click on storage, and that's a bucket that contains all my files um, to use for a variety of things. Like if it's a blog post, I might use this. If I have my personal blog, I put the image there, and I can just upload things very easily like this. You know, uh, click this. Get the eagle, confirm. And now it uploads to to, uh, to Flick Storage, and you can access it via a CDN like this. Oh, what is this? I know there's an error of some kind. It's fine. But here there's this uh, CDN uh, link, and you use that to uh, distribute your file. Go back to the application. Present standard. So that was it for, for the, the demo. So we saw a cool application that was built with um, Flick Storage JS to uh, actually put our CID to IPFS. And inside the smart contract, as we've seen, there's actually a CID associated with your token, which is the way that it should be if you are actually developing a hack uh, using uh, for the hackathon using uh, NFTs. And here, there's a bunch of resources. Again, our documentation, there is documentation for uh, Flick Storage. It tells you how, how to use uh, Flick Storage JS, all the different methods, or you can build an application similar to the Crypto Museum. Um, the NPM package on YouTube, we have different tutorials. We have the blog also that is our kind of article. So 
It's all kind of fun uh, resources that you can look to learn more about how to use this. So to recap, you are on, in a hackathon, you are um, creating applications, you want to use Flick hosting to host your front end on IPFS. Uh, make it decentralized like that. So Flick hosting, that's the most important part of this presentation that I want you to remember. And the second one is if you have assets like images and videos, host them using Flick storage so they can be on IPFS. And little note, if you have in a project that uses NFTs, you really want to consider using Fleek storage. And that's it for the presentation. So uh, I'm going to close this. So uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending. I hope it was uh, you know, useful to you guys in uh, there's some fun tools that you can, uh, you can use. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot, Samuel. Um, yeah, there, there's a few questions in here. One, so th basically we are in a very simple way able to host a, a front end, whether you build that in React, TypeScript, um, just JavaScript, whatever it may be, and be able to host that with Fleek, uh, basically to IPFS. Is that, is that kind of summarize it? Yes, uh, exactly this. Exactly that. You can host your site on IPFS. Uh, very good for static sites. Uh, like uh, you go Gatsby, uh, the Gatsby framework, Jekyll, or uh, if you have a static site like React, Vue, they can all be, uh, I think it's, uh, it's framework agnostic. Awesome. Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is amazing. And, and it's exciting to be able to see mm -hmm. fully decentralized applications from, from, from the top all the way through, through the bottom with all the work that you all are doing. Uh, cool. Well, everyone uh, who's listening in, uh, again, today's the last day for, for the Midway Checkpoint. Uh, so make sure to submit what you've been working on uh, to be able to submit a final project. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Samuel, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, thank you. Cool. Well, thanks again, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time.